Okay, so here we're going to try to do a conditional proof by making an assumption. So in this case, you, normally what you'd want to do is you'd want to start off with a single letter. But here we don't have a single letter. We also don't have a conjunction that could force a single letter. So we're going to start with our assumption here. So my first statement is going to be R. I'm going to assume that R is true. So that's my assumption. Now I'm going to look to see which one of my premises has R in it. Well, I have this one and I have this one. Well, if, in order to be able to do this one, I have to know something about P. But I can do something with this statement because 2 here, I could say that R or S is true. Because surely if R is true, then R or S is true because this is just a disjunctive statement. Just one of them has to be true. So this is actually called disjunctive addition, and we're going to say to line 1. Okay. Now, if that is true, now I can go ahead and say that this next thing is true, which is my premise here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. So let's bring that down. Now I could say that's true. And what's the reasoning for that? Well, that's just a premise. Okay, now once I have these two statements from lines 2 and 3, R or S and R or S implies Q, now I can say that Q is true. Okay, this comes from modus ponens, lines 2 and 3. Okay, so if this is true, and then this is true, then this is true. Okay, now that we have Q is true, so now I'm going to keep going here. Now I'm going to look back to my uh, premises and I'm going to see, okay, well, which one has a Q in it? Obviously the first one here. So I'm going to use that statement next. So why don't we just go ahead and bring this over. So we're going to say not Q implies, I'm uh, not P implies not Q, sorry. And the reason for that is, well, we have a premise. Okay, once we have that, now what can we conclude from lines 4 and 5? We have Q and we have not P implies not Q. Then you can state that P is true. And this is from modus tollens now of lines 4 and 5. Okay, and the way you're thinking about this is, well, if Q is true, then not Q has to be false. And if not Q is false, but this entire statement is true, then not P has to be false, which means that P has to be true. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and continue on here. So now we have P is true. Well, now we're going to go to our last uh, premise here, which is this statement. So we throw this in. P and R implies W. Uh, actually, before we state that, uh, you notice how we have P and R in this first part here? Let's actually state that in our proof here. Because I know that we have P here and we have R here, so surely I can say P and R is true, because we have that line 6 and line 1. So that's just conjunctive, so conjunctive addition. And that's from lines 1 and 6, conjunctive addition. Okay, so now that we have that conjunctive addition, now let's actually state that premise here. So now we're going to go ahead and paste this. Okay, so you can say P and R implies W. Okay, so now we have P implies W, and obviously that reason is the premise again. So 8 here is just a premise. Some of you may write this as given. Um, okay, and then we're going to continue on. After we have that statement, now we go to 9. Between statements 7 and 8, what can we conclude? Now we can conclude W. Okay. The reason for this is our modus ponens from lines 7 and 8. And now our ultimate goal was to show that R implies W. Well, we have R. 
we ended up with W. So lastly here, we can state that R does in fact imply W, and there's our conditional proof. Hope that helps. All right, there you go.